Julie Flett, author and illustrator talk by Madison Paul. So, who is Julie Flett? Julie Flett is a proud Cree Métis woman with incredible illustrating and storytelling talents. She was born and raised in Toronto. Growing up, her mother owned and ran a weaving shop and eventually a vintage consignment shop. Spending time in her mother's shop is where she grew a deep appreciation for textures, patterns, colors, and materials. She was also inspired by her father's drawing abilities. On days she would stay home from school, she would spend hours drawing various lived experiences. She went on to study fine arts at Concordia University in Montreal and worked towards a degree in textiles and film. She considers herself to be a self-taught illustrator. She is greatly inspired by her heritage and the languages spoken by her grandparents. She collaborates with family, the community, and linguists. Julie realized that she had a passion for using her art as a form of education. She discovered this through her advocacy work at Positive Women's Network in downtown Vancouver. As we will see, Julie uses her literature as a way to educate and connect individuals and communities. Julie has experience in both authoring and illustrating. Some works illustrated and authored by her would be We All Count and We All Play, Bird Song, Wild Berries, Black Bear Red Fox, and Owls See Clearly at Night. Some of Julie's most well-known collaborations would be On the Trap Line with David A. Alexander, The Girl and the Wolf with Catherine Vermette, We Sang You Home and Little You by Richard Van Camp, and When We Were Alone by David Robertson. One book not often found on Julie's list of credited works are her illustrations for a book from 2004 called The Moccasins. This was the very first book she ever worked on. When she saw how elders related to the story, she realized she wanted to help give Indigenous people more representation in children's literature. Julie's book, Birdsong, was a hit and earned the TD Canadian Children's Literature Award in 2020. The same book also landed as a finalist for the Governor General's Literacy Award. She would later earn that award for her illustrations in the book, When We Were Alone. Little You by Richard Van Camp and illustrated by Julie Flett was nominated for and won the 2016 American Indian Youth Literature Award Best Picture Book. She was nominated and a finalist for many of her collaborations such as Zoe and the Fawn and My Heart Fills with Happiness. Her work Owls See Clearly at Night won multiple awards such as the Christy Harris Illustrated Children's Literature Prize and the BC Book Prize. Julie's words and illustrations cover multiple age groups from infant to school age. There is a little something for everyone. Her works We All Play, We All Count, and Black Bear Red Fox would be examples of books that would be suitable for infants to twos. These books make use of large fonts that are easy for the children to see, and the amount of text in these books is minimal, one to two words per page, which is perfect for keeping our younger children's attention. We All Play is full of action words like wiggle, wobble, rustle, and roost. I have included an example from her book, Black Bear, Red Fox, so you can visualize the simplicity of these stories. Wild berries would be ideal for children three and up. The sentences on each page are short and sweet, but make use of onomatopoeias such as tzips, tzips, for berries falling in the bucket, or shh, shh, of the spider making its web. Bird song, when we were alone, and dragonfly kites would be perfect for children four and up. Of course, this will be different for every group, but I read stories of this length with the bears. These stories are a tad bit longer and have more complex narratives, and this is perfect for fours and up who are expanding their imagination and curiosity. 
For example, Birdsong follows the story of a young girl who befriends her elderly neighbor. We follow her through spring, summer, fall, winter, and spring again as she navigates her friend's declining health through art, music, and movement. It's a really beautiful book. So now I wanted to talk about Julie's style. Um, as we can see through these images, she uses a really minimalistic and modern style that makes use of textures and depth. You can see her inspiration and love of textiles through her art. She uses bold lines and shapes to top simple backgrounds. Each photo is simple yet stunning. The soft colors of each image are perfectly layered together to portray what I see as Julie's style. Common themes in her illustrations are landscapes like the woods and wild berries and a day with Yaya or prairies and fields like the ones in Birdsong and Johnny's Pheasant. You will also notice that she often illustrates children and relationships. Her work is full of life through a multitude of characters. For example, Little Yu is full of images of children with their parents and loved ones. The last common theme you can often find is animals. Animals play a vital role in Julie's storytelling. She uses them and we all play to describe how we play just as animals do and also illustrates the dolphins in Dolphin SOS. Naturally, Julie's heritage has always inspired her work. She gives indigenous children the opportunity to be seen and represented in her work, as well as children with darker complexions and features. We also see her story supporting diversity by teaching others on the Cree language. Throughout her stories, you will find pronunciation guides and Cree words sprinkled in here and there. In Wildberries, I learned that long time is gonesk in Cree. In We All Count, she translates the English numbers to Cree. Other stories, such as On the Trap Line, highlight the differences in people's ways of life. It describes a grandfather's experiences living on a trap line, and this is where you live, hunt, and gather. When We Were Alone takes us through a grandmother's experience at a residential school. We also see a vast amount of family dynamics being explored. In My Heart Fills with Happiness, we can see a mom walking with a child, a dad drumming with a son, and children baking and singing together, just to name a few. Birdsong follows a little girl and her intergenerational friendship. Her illustrations really resonate within Indigenous culture as so much of her work surrounds community and togetherness, one of the most sacred values. So, why Julie Flett? Well, Julie Flett would be a great addition to anybody's library. Her stories are relatable to children and adults alike. Her stories often cover topics like adventure and love and friendship, which are all things that really resonate with children. She also commonly uses family members like grandmothers, aunties, uncles, sisters, and cousins, which I think has a really special way of speaking to children. And her literature is also quality because of its linguistic nature. She uses really intriguing descriptive vocabulary even in her short stories. Language like yip, nuzzle, squirt, sour, and juicy. And beyond just her linguistics, she beautifully matches illustrations to words to make stories really come to life. Her collaboration with Katherine Jameson showcases her talis talents when Zoe asks if a particular bird is the fawn's mother. The bird has brown feathers with small white dots, just like the fawn. Without needing an explanation, we can see why Zoe might think that. Every detail matters with her minimalistic design. I want to share Julie's work with children because I feel like her unique illustration style mixed with the heartwarming stories about little boys and their mushrooms, grandfathers, little girls and their unlikely furry friends, or friends in their summertime adventures is a sure way to connect to children and their sense of belonging and community. Her illustrations are also a great way for us as educators and parents to bring more representation to our bookcases. 
Her illustrations represent indigenous children, children in norm families, and children who come from families that follow land-based practices. In Wild Berries, we follow a little boy and his berry picking adventures with his grandmother. Lastly, we use Julie's books as a resource to learn about the Cree and Michif languages. Her books contain pronunciation charts, which are perfect for those of us that may be a little bit hesitant to try out the new words. What I really, really love about these books, though, is that the beauty and the awe of them stand no matter what language you're reading them in. Her stories are delightful, captivating, and speak to a diverse audience. Julie Flett will remain one of my most adored authors and illustrators.